Hello, my name is Nicole Gilliari, and I am responding to the claim that social networking sites have a significant negative impact on society. My opponent's secondary claims were, first, social networking sites such as MySpace, Facebook, and Twitter expose people to types of cyberbullying and cyber harassment. Second, social networking sites leave users open to sexual predators and security risks. And third, social networking sites lead to decreased productivity in the work environment. My response to secondary claim one is there are unclear reasoning and evidence of how social networks contribute to cyberbullying. My opponent's primary evidence was of a man named Tyler Clemente who had jumped from the George Washington Bridge after two students at his university videotaped a sexual encounter between him and another man and streamed it through Twitter. Um, an evidence challenge to that is that this example has no real statistical data that supports how often and how prevalent bullet cyberbullying leads to suicidal thoughts and extreme actions like that. Um, this example also creates a reasoning for generalization that all cyberbullying leads to suicidal issue and that all cyberbullying is not stopped before these extreme actions are taken. Likewise, the act of cyberbullying is not the type you would normally associate with this um, example. Normally we would think it would be just um, posting comments, pictures, and verbal slander against or to another person to hurt them. In this situation, the social network being used is more of the setting than the instrument. Um, my response to secondary claim two is social networking sites provide privacy settings deliberately to help secure the privacy and safety of their users. My opponent's evidence was an article in the LA Times that stated over 90,000 registered sex offenders have a registered profile on MySpace and use them to obtain information. A reasoning challenge to that is that on various sites there is the ability to make your profile private and only to people you accept. This leads to a more obvious reasoning that a child should have the knowledge and capabilities to identify someone as someone they do not know and realize a threat or dangerous situation. A few counterclaims to that is my stage requires to be at users to be at least 14 years old and all the users under 16 are automatically set to private so no one can see them unless they are confirmed as a friend. According to the Pew Internet Research Project, 66% of teens who have created a profile say their profile is not visible to all internet users. Likewise, there have been laws put in to deter sex offenders from joining social networks. According to authors Amanda Lenhart and Mary Madden, Illinois passed a law in August 2009 banning registered sex offenders from using social networking sites with the goal of protecting children from online predators. And last, a report from the Internet Safety Technical Task Force found that children are less vulnerable to online sexual predators than commonly thought and adults lying about their ages to initiate relationships with minors are a rare occurrence. 43% of online sexual solicitors were identified as being adolescents under 18. 30% were adults between the ages of 18 and 21, and 9% were adults over the age of 21. And this is as of December 31st of 2008. My response to secondary claim three is social, social network sites help with productivity in the workforce. My opponent's primary evidence was a 2007 study from Australia um, from Australian businesses that found that their workers, um, the time that their workers spent on Facebook cost them up to $4.5 billion a year. And also in the UK, it costs that, those businesses $12.5 billion a year. An evidence challenge is that when conducting, the, conducting tests on the statistical evidence, it came to find there was no citation, or there was a citation, but no actual um, information on who gathered the evidence, where it was gathered, and how it was gathered, which leads me to believe that this is not a credible statistic. Um, a reasoning challenge is sites like LinkedIn, Focus, eCademy, and Zig are used globally to help productivity in companies and business. These sites increase the company's online presence, enlarge the network of the business, and enable others to provide reviews and information. Other, state, or other sites like Facebook and MySpace give the opportunity to businesses to provide advertisement and to be able to find and manage demographics and social trends. Um, 
lacks a counterclaim. According to the Network Roundtable at the University of Virginia, out of 23 companies over the past 18 months, we have found social network analysis a valuable means of, eight, er, of facilitating collaboration in a strategically important group, such as top leadership networks, strategic business units, new product development teams, communities of practice, joint ventures, and workers. In conclusion, I would like to state my supporting claims again. Um, first, there are unclear reasoning and evidence how social networks contribute to cyberbullying. Second, social networking sites provide privacy settings deliberately to help secure the privacy and safety of their users. And last, social network sites help with productivity in the workforce. With these, I hope you understand that there is a substantial effort being used and has been used to help social networking stay a fun and beneficial element for our society. Thank you. Okay, we've got a very clear statement of the claim and the secondary claims, uh, and uh, you've got some counterclaims that you're presenting. Uh, you suggest on the first point a lack of statistical information. I'm not sure that that's necessary by the advocate. They're at least showing that there's a risk. You uh, don't have any counter evidence on that particular point, so <coughs> it's an okay press to make. But uh, it would seem like if we were in a debate that there would probably be backup coming from the respondent and, and, and mostly all you have then at this point is a press uh, to respond to that. I thought uh, that you had an interesting strategy on the second point arguing that the kids have uh, privacy restrictions, they can set the privacy. You had some good evidence on this particular point where uh, most of the people on these networks do have the privacy settings in a particular way and I also like the evidence that you had that suggested about the uh, different age groups that it's relatively rare that you have people who are substantially out of the age group pretending to be uh, younger and uh, I thought that that kind of addresses that issue a little bit more directly. I like the counterclaim that you have at the end, although you've got an okay press on their economic argument. Um, you, know, you could probably be a little bit more aggressive about it, but the counterclaim I think uh, does respond to it really effectively by showing that there is all kinds of productivity and economic value to the social network sites. All right, thank you.